to another episode of Couples and Carts. I got a nice package today from a company called NR Racing. Uh, I'm not I'm not sponsored by them, but I did order a upgrade kit for one of the engines. Uh, we're actually going to be putting it on Harrison. I know I had said that the motor quit working on me, but I think there may just be a little bit of trash in the uh, fuel system. So part of our upgrade kit is going to be changing out the uh, main jet and the carburetor. So uh, let me take a sip of tea real quick and I'll show you what we got in the box. For our cup of tea today we have another cup of Fireside Vanilla Spice from Celestial Seasonings. Again, I, I highly encourage you to add a scoop or so of sugar. It really brings out the vanilla flavor and really gives that spice a pick-me-up. It's really good and I encourage you to go try some. Let me take a sip of tea real quick and I'll show you what we got in the box. We have a high performance air filter. It's going to replace our stock one. We have a new exhaust header. We have the adapter for the air filter and the throttle hold down bracket that goes with it. We've got a new set of 22 pound valve springs that we're going to be installing. And we also have a fan for the flywheel. I don't think I'm going to use this one. I think I'm just going to use the factory one that came on there. Um, this one looks a little bit on the small side, but we'll see what happens. I may use it, I might not. We'll see. It looks like we also have a number 92 carburetor jet or maybe 92 thousandths carburetor jet. I'm not sure. I will get more information on that uh, a little bit later on when we go ahead and install it. And I also have a valve cover gasket that came with it and a NR Racing offset flywheel key that's supposed to set it to 8 degrees. Don't exactly know what that means, but we'll find out together. Um, all of this I actually got for around 80 bucks plus shipping, or well, 80 bucks including shipping, excuse me. Um, so I'm really happy with it. Um, all of the parts look like they're pretty good quality. The only thing that I did not get was a, was a valve cover filter. So on the original valve cover, and I'll show you this a little bit later, there's a vacuum line that comes out. I didn't get the filter that goes inside that vacuum line to give it the, the actual vacuum portion. So that's one thing I am going to have to see if I can get a hold of. If not, we'll just try and run it without it and see what happens. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started by replacing the exhaust and the air filter. And then on the next episode, we're going to do the valve springs. And to do the valve springs, we got to take we have to take off the cover and once everything's been removed and put back together we actually have to set the valve lash and I will find out exactly what it needs to be set at and what parts and tools we need to do that. So without any further drinking the tea, we'll go ahead and get right down to business. I'll see you guys over at the cart. Okay, we're going to start by removing our muffler. We're going to be using a 13 millimeter wrench. Make sure whenever you pull this off that you're real kind of easy with it unless it's real stuck. Reason being is there's a gasket between your exhaust and the head of the engine. So you want to be real careful with it. Uh, let's see here. Here's that gasket I was talking about. I I've got a spare one, so I think I'm going to replace it. You can see 
how it kind of started to separate right there. So let's go get us a new gasket. I'm gonna step on this side of the engine now so my elbow and my hat ain't in the way. I got my gasket here. I'll go ahead and make sure it's all facing the same direction. This one is a little bit of a tight fit but as long as everything lines up that's how we want it. So we're going to make sure that it goes the right way. It'll only fit on there in one direction. So it goes on there just like that. We'll take those. Like I saw, like I did right there, if you find out that you need a little bit more clearance, so you see how it's hitting, how the end of the wrench is hitting the side of the cart, you just pull it off and flip it over. You can see it gives you a whole lot more room to work with. That should be good. I don't think it's going anywhere. Now we'll go ahead and get started with the air filter. Okay, for the air filter, we're going to use our 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter socket. Just pull that off right there, just like we did in the last video. Excuse me, just like we've done in a previous video. It wasn't the last one. You want to make sure that your fuel is in the off position. Doing so will allow the filter housing to come completely off. Set these up here. And we're going to go ahead and pull it off. So now I was mistaken. It's not just the valve cover that I need to get a filter for. It's also the fuel tank. So I will be definitely getting that as well. Okay, so when you assemble this, this is how it's going to look from the back side. You've got your little 1 8 Allen head screw here. And this is your choke cable, choke lever hold down so you just want to slide it on here and this particular adapter is actually plastic so you want to be careful when you put the screw in there that you don't strip the hole out or do anything like that because that would not be good which is what I almost did that's why it took me a little while to get back so now I'm going to take my Allen key and I'm just going to tighten it down right where it's supposed to be. So you just want to test your choke lever, make sure that there's plenty of clearance between all of the components right there. And that's all that you need to do for that. Next we're going to take our air filter, pod filter as it's also called. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pull this back off real quick because we didn't put the nuts back in here. So, that's going to be the next step. So before I get ahead of myself again, I'm going to take my two 10 millimeter nuts, and I'm going to put them back where they're supposed to go, so all our mess stays where it's supposed to be. See, so you and me, between you and me, this is a learning process. I've never done this before. So, I get a little bit ahead of myself. And I forget things. Be all right. 
Now what we're going to do, we're also going to take our hose clamp and flip it around so it's easier to get to. Since we're putting it on a downward, putting the air filter on a downward angle, now we're going to put the air filter on. There we go. We want to be able to also to make sure that we can still reach our on off switch for our fuel flow. So that should be about good right there. Spin our clamp around. Now you want to make sure your clamp's even all the way around the top if you can. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Again, I'm not going to go overly tight, but I am going to make sure that the hose, the uh, I am going to make sure that the air filter ain't going to come off. All right, the last step that we have is the main jet and the carburetor. So I'm going to get the camera position where hopefully you'll be able to see it, and we'll get that taken care of, and then we're going to try and start this rascal. We're going to be taking off the bottom of the carburetor, again using that 10 millimeter socket. I'm just going to break this loose and I would highly suggest that before you do anything fuel related that you wear a pair of gloves and safety glasses because I will be honest with you, I have taken old nasty fuel to the face and it did not feel good. So I'm just going to crack it loose until I can undo it by finger. That way I don't get too much fuel on my tools. There we go. And make sure you got a pan that you can drop the fuel that's going to come out of here into. Again, make sure your fuel flow is off, otherwise it's just going to keep on draining. Okay. So fuel bowl looks pretty clean I don't see any junk and trash in there so we'll see what happens when we put this new jet in now to change the jet we first need to get our jet alright so since I'm done with getting all this fuel out, I'm going to put my pan in the floor directly underneath it just in case. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and re remove this because my memory card got full. This is just so you can see the process. I've already put the new jet inside of the tube, but I want you guys to be able to see exactly how that whole operation goes. So you're going to take your flathead screwdriver and just put it right up here through this center tube and then you'll be able to twist it around and you'll feel where it catches and then you just unscrew your jet like you would a regular screw or nut or bolt or anything else like that. So when you get all the way to the bottom, you're going to have the jet that comes out first and the emulsion tube comes out on top of that. So here's our brand new jet and here's our emulsion tube. And you'll see it's got a narrow side and a fat side. You want the fat side on the bottom. So we're just going to go ahead put that back up in there and it's important that you don't cross thread this because not only is that not something that you want to do at all but this isn't the only thing that goes inside of this uh, tube here you also have the bolt that holds your fuel bowl on so when you get all the way to the top you want it just past tight and then you also want to make sure that your black o-ring is still in here 
or it could be also a dark brown color uh, similar to the way this one is but you're gonna put your bowl up in there and then your screw goes right back in and again make sure you don't cross thread it and then just tighten that down as well this bolt also does not need to be overly tight that way you don't strip out the inner portion and that's done so I'm going to reinstall our air filter and then we're going to try and get this thing running and see how it sounds. Alright, so here we have a stock Predator without the modifications that we've done. And then we have the modifications that we did on Harrison. We upgraded the air filter, the exhaust, and the fuel jet. So we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison and show you just how much louder it actually gets with that header on there. Alright, that's stock, not modified. So this one's definitely opened up a lot more, sounds a lot better, and uh, I'm actually going to take it for a little quick trip down the block, just to make sure everything's running good with the throttle. And then on next week's episode, we're going to be doing the valve springs, so I hope you guys come and join me again. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell for notifications so you can see the next step in the process. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you later.